Hi, this is Paul Solt from iPhone Dev TV, and this is a course to teach you how to create your very first iPhone app. If you've ever had an idea for an app and you wanted to put it on a screen like this iPhone over here, and you were intimidated to get started, there's probably a, a good reason for that. It's because it's it's not trivial, it's it's kind of hard, and without someone to sort of walk you through it, it can be a real challenge. And so that's what this course is designed for. This is a course that I wanted to build because I was frustrated when I was learning how to do iPhone app development. There was issues that I didn't quite understand. There's still things that I don't always understand when I'm first learning them, and it takes time to really absorb the material. So this course is sort of a collection of my experiences building apps, and it's a, a project sort of based approach where we'll be designing iPhone apps while we're learning the programming basics. So. Rather than sit through just an Objective-C course, I'm combining the Objective-C and the iOS app courses together so that you can really get your hands dirty uh, with app development right away. I just want to go over some of the materials you'll need, the goals for this course, and the thing that I think is most important, which is to practice. With this course, you're going to want to have a Mac, and I believe anything from 2008 or later will work. And an alternative, if you're a PC user, is to use MacandCloud.com. Additionally, you want Xcode 5 or later and Mountain Line, which is 10.8 or later. And you'll need Mountain Line to run Xcode, which is what we'll be using to write our computer programs. So those are the two requirements. And this is a, a new change because iOS 7 just came out, and so did Xcode 5. So if you've seen my previous videos, these are going to be a little bit different because the interface has changed in Xcode, as well as some of the code that you'll write. The last thing that you'll need is a notebook. And I think this is really important because you'll use this to draw your ideas for apps, to write down what you're learning, what you're confused about, and then you can go back to that and sort of reevaluate or fill in the blanks that you were missing. The goals I have for this course is to teach you how to read and write code. Now, this can seem pretty daunting if you've ever watched movies where they just sort of flash some code on the screen, and that's generally not how it works. Um, if you ever watch a hacker's movie, it's not really how it works. It's more of a, a movie, so it's, it's not real. And what we're going to be learning is the basics. There's a lot of different topics to learn, and they all have sort of pluses and minuses and how they help you build your iPhone app. So I'll be showing you each topic and I'll be explaining why you need to learn it and how it helps you with your iPhone apps. With this course, you'll be able to build any style of utility iPhone app. And I think this is a good starting point because utility style iPhone apps are the best place to start when you want to create something. So this might be a unit converter or it might be a temperature or a weather-related kind of iPhone app. Um, something simple that's a single screen is a, a good place to start, and that's what this course preps you for. And the last thing is I want you to sketch your ideas. I want you to, to take whatever's in your brain, whatever you've been talking about with friends and family, and put that on paper. I find that when I write down my ideas and I can see them on paper, I can interact with them, so I can paper prototype. That means I can play with the interface. If I draw the buttons and the, the icons and the pictures, even if it's a really bad sketch, I can still play with it with my fingers like it's an iPhone app. And I think that's really important in the creative process where you're trying to transfer an idea that was in your head uh, to paper and then into computer code so that you can actually create that app. The thing that is most important with this course is practice. If you watch all the videos and you don't follow along, you're not going to learn. There's, there's so many things that you've learned just from going through the routine of typing in the code that you see on the screen uh, and running into the errors and learning how to solve them. That is what makes a computer programmer good. It's your experience seeing an issue and sort of tinkering around until you can fix it. And with that in mind, if you want to learn iPhone development over the next month or two, I would really recommend scheduling one to two hours a day, maybe three or five days a week. Um, if you can spend more time, that's great. Um, but if it doesn't really fit in your schedule, don't push it too much. So some of this 
the more time that I, I feel that you put into this, you're going to get more out of it, especially those first 20 hours. So in terms of sort of a breakdown, you will want to be coding 30 to 60 minutes a day. If you're watching the videos, I highly recommend that you either watch the video and then try and do it, or you watch the video and follow along, or you watch the video, then you watch it again, and then you follow along in your second time through. Sometimes the, the terminology and the pace can be a little bit fast if you've never seen something before. So go at a pace that you find doable. And next, if you're reading or watching, there's a lot of good reading materials. Uh, the Big Nerd Ranch books are really good for iPhone development and Objective-C. And you can also check out the WWDC videos, uh, which are good, but they are more technical. So if you haven't finished this course, they might be a little over your head. And you might want to just focus on these course videos. But there are some good sort of user interface design videos that Apple has or some just technology demos where you can see like what they do and they'll do some live coding and do some really neat things. So I, I see the WWDC videos as sort of inspiration for what you can do uh, and to sort of get an idea of some of the advanced topics. Lastly, I want you to track your progress. So much like writing down your sketches and playing with it, there's things that you're going to be learning, there's new terms that you're going to be learning, and putting it on paper helps you build a mental model of what you're learning. So as you're working through things, write down the video that you're watching, write down the new terminology that you're learning, the new code lines that you're learning to write. And if you have a question about them, write it down so that you can answer it later and leave space so that you can sort of fill in these blanks as you work through the materials. All right, and everything that we'll be doing will be in Xcode. And Xcode is really just like a, a word processor like Word except it allows us to write computer code and then do a lot of fancy stuff to it that eventually turns it into an iPhone app. So in this course, you'll learn how to use Xcode. You'll learn how a lot of the different features work and you'll learn how to debug your own applications so that you can fix bugs and make your users happy when you finally submit your app. Thanks for checking out the course. If you have any other questions, head over to iPhone Dev TV. You can find my contact information and a lot of tutorials and other advanced courses on iPhone development.